guys, welcome to Top 3. I'm your host, Preston Pollard, with my friends, Sashmi and Taylor, filling for Bianca, and my main man, Rich. What's up, man? How, How you doing, buddy? Doing, good, doing really good. Right Thanks on. Too. Well, we have an amazing show for you. We have a special guest, Frank Shelton. He's going to be talking about his book, and it's going to be great. It's called Carrying Greatness, because there is greatness inside of you. We also have uh, an amazing musical guest, Brad Hi. Albin. So stay tuned. On you. All right, guys, well, we are so excited to be joined by our guest to the show. We have Pastor Frank Shelton Jr. in the house. Thank you so, so much. So happy to have you it's here. It's an honor to be back yes, with you. Yes, most definitely. Rich, Good to see you, my man. You, I love you guys. Yeah, we love you too. We're excited to have you here. And you really are a man of many talents. You are busy, busy, busy. I was chatting with you before the show. You are a pastor, you're a speaker, mm -hmm. an author. Um, you're a Fox News correspondent. Yeah. You're all over the place. We love it. You Keep know, me busy. God just uses uh, not the blessed. He uses the broken. Yeah. And he still uses imperfect people to promote a perfect God. So it's that old thing you've heard that it's not our ability or inability, but it's our availability. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of times we buy the lie thinking I had to have straight A's. And, you know, the world looks at titles, but God's asking about your testimony. Yeah. Mm. So whatever your hand finds to do, do it for God's glory. Yeah. And uh, so, man, we just tried to have been available. Um, I got saved at the age of seven in 1979. And three years later, at age 10, I had such a heart for the lost. God used me to bring 22 kids to Vacation Bible School in July 1982. And I believe saved people want to see people saved. Yeah. And three years later, eighth grade, 1985, um, I won a Hollywood trip from D.C. to LAX to spend the weekend with Sylvester Stallone. Okay. I mean, how many 13-year-olds do you know does that happen to? <laughs> Not very often. And on the whole flight, we bought Sly a Bible, my godmother and I. And he, the, Satan was just saying, don't give it to him. You're going to make a scene. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We got there, and uh, we just remember looking in his eyes and said, heaven won't be the same without you. And my godmother presented the Bible, and I gave him a drawing with the Romans wrote on the back, because even your heroes need him. But here's the thing. If I didn't share my faith at 10 in 1982 with those in anonymity, I wouldn't be doing it three years later with those in celebrity. Yeah. I had a burden for friends, but now I'm standing before famous. And see, if you're not faithful when no one's looking, you're gonna drop the ball when everyone's watching. Mm, and good. then, so, go off to middle school, they named me the president of student government. That's not arrogant, it's just, you know, Christianity's not boring. I believe if you promote the Lord, he'll promote you. Go off to high school, 1,200 kids, and uh, didn't drink, was a virgin on my honeymoon night by God's grace. I promoted him, he promoted me. I'm the prom king out of 1,200 people in a public school. Like now, someone sounds. told me that you do some impersonations. Yeah, yeah. I want to see these. Before uh, we talk about you know, the serious stuff, we, yeah. someone says you do a great Billy Graham. Oh, yeah. man. Well, there's only one Billy Graham. Billy Graham's grandson, uh, Tulian Chavidian's brother, Anthony, wrote the foreword to our new book. Oh, wow. And um, I saw Billy Graham 13 times in person, but never met him. My dad met him twice. But if I could meet anyone, it would have been Billy Graham. But here's a snippet. Yeah, let's Here see you it. Go. Let's see it. Just the other day. A woman came into my office and with tears subsiding, said, Dr. Graham, can you help me? I paused with all sincerity, said, ma'am, no, I cannot, but I can lead you to the one who can. She told me she was discouraged, depressed, and thought of death daily. I showed her the scriptures, how Christ climbed Calvary's cross for her. And today you may be watching by way of monitor. I'd like to send you some free literature, right, Billy Graham? That's all the address you'll need. Perhaps you're in Canada. That's P.O. Box 844, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And some of you may be in a hotel. You may be sitting at a bar. And some of you are in the balcony. Believe me, the buses will wait. You come forward as you give your heart to Jesus oh, Christ. That my is God. Crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That's weird. God. That's amazing. No, I, I feel just, like I just met Billy Graham. How, how, how did you know how to do that? You just watched him a lot well, as a kid? You know, when, well, you know, if they could follow the Grateful Dead, I could follow Dr. Graham. There you go. I guess and so. And when you're that's white, good. they call you Graham Crackers. Amen. I was, <laughs> I was at Niagara Falls. They called me a Cracker Barrel, but that's a whole nother server. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, I just believe who you respect is who you attract. And whether it was TV shows in middle school, peer pressure, it's so enormous, and then there's positive peer pressure. And I just thought, God, you know, if you could use somehow my jokes to make someone smile or lighten their day or make their burden lighter, let me be that guy. And here's the thing, Rich, you don't have to be the best, but when you're blessed, you give God your best. Yeah. And that's the test, and he'll do the rest. If you're blessed, you do your best. So you don't gotta go to Harvard, but you gotta be tapped into him. And see, once you're rolling with him, man, God can use you on earth. And boy, you're the ones on worldwide television, so. I'm just a goofball, but yeah, the thing is, so whether you're, 
if you hit him with jokes, then you can knock him out with Jesus. Yeah. Hit him with the comedy, but it's all about the cross. Yeah, so talk to us a little bit about yeah, the book. Yeah, I'm, here, I, I'm so excited about this. Well, thank you. Um, real quick, the book is called Caring Greatness. It came out Tuesday. And these are stories I've heard my whole life. Um, uh, my great, great, great grandfather, Joseph Gale Shelton, was on duty, Good Friday, Ford's Theater, 1865, the night Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. Wow. And I was going to go into politics, preach, or protect the president. And I was blessed to pursue all three by my 35th birthday. I was with the U.S. Capitol Police for two and a half years. I was going to join the Secret Service, but God gave me a message I couldn't, see, couldn't keep secret. And true story, my ancestors and my family, all the way up to my dad, have protected the last 26 of 28 U.S. presidents. That's probably a record. But my ancestor hand-carried Lincoln across the street the night he died. Oh my That's goodness. on my father's side. On my mother's side, 1912, he was the chief foreman for the U.S. Park Service. And they were given a task, a goodwill gift from another nation in Japan, from Okinawa. And he was getting ready to retire. And they were told, go plant these seeds. And one colleague said, they seem so small. And I don't know what was worse. It was the coldest winter in Washington that year. And I don't know what was worse, the cold climate or the chilling complaints of his colleagues. And they got down and began to plant. And true stories, that little thing that was so small grew to monumental proportions. They are the cherry blossoms that one million people come to Washington every year. Wow. So on my mother's side, 1912, I got one ancestor who planted the iconic cherry blossoms in life. Yeah. Then on my father's side, I got an ancestor at hand carried arguably the greatest president in death. Mm. But I'll go to my grave. Both knew they were carrying greatness. So on the cover of the book, we got a pregnant woman. And I just want to speak to the world. First of all, adoption is still better than abortion. And then two, I don't advocate ever using abortion as some type of contraceptive. Do you know the Lincoln Memorial has the Vietnam Wall Memorial? It was an 18 year old Asian student who was a freshman at Yale who designed the Vietnam Wall with 58,026 names on it. And it goes a good distance, but since Roe v. Wade was 60 million abortions, if you got the same girl who's now in her late 40s and started off small and built a black memorial, and if you start at the Lincoln Memorial and you add not 58,000, but 60 million names, do you know how far the wall goes? probably from Washington, D.C. to the doorstep of Camden Yards, home of the Baltimore Orioles, wow. baseball stadium. Yeah. And see, I say this with humility, that is not a choice, it's a child. Because if you remember when Mary had Jesus in her womb and Elizabeth had John the Baptist in his womb, the baby said when Mary walked in that the lad leapt. Mm -hmm. The boy, not even a Baptist, went bonkers. And, and the wild thing is, and John jumped. And I thought, why in the world did John jump and the lad leap and the boy goes bonkers before his birth? I've been told that I have the red eye flight tomorrow, but on Monday in any courtroom in, from New York to Los Angeles, the wild thing is in every day in courthouses in America, whether you're a stenographer taking notes, an attorney wearing a thousand dollar suit with cufflinks, the janitor or jury, defendant or plaintiff, you always hear two words, all rise. Mm -hmm. And protocol says you stand with respect for the one who wears the robe. And I submit to you that John knew Jesus before he was born. And then number two is the reason that John went bonkers is because when Elizabeth having John in her belly walked in and Mary walked in with Jesus, the reason John jumped and the boy goes bonkers is because John knew in his mama's belly that Jesus was not only in the womb, the king who would wear the royal robe is now in the same room, all rise. And see, John knew Jesus was before he born. So he leapt for Jesus, he lived for Jesus, and loved Jesus even to death. And I just think, you know, I got saved at seven, and I can be honest, I've just never gotten over Jesus because he never got over us. Yeah, so and my good. thing is, if he could die for us, man, we can live for him. And it's not that you're working your way to heaven, but here's a word for someone. I believe that the poorest person on the planet is not the one with no savings in life. It's the one no savior at his death. And I just believe that most of us got enough of Jesus to get us to heaven, but apparently not enough of Jesus to keep somebody out of hell. 95% yeah. Christians, and you know this to be true, are going to live and die never leading anybody to Jesus. And, you know, I told the guest that we just had that he would never be married if he didn't have the guts to invite her out. And then, you know, most folks would never get a job if they didn't have the guts to submit a resume. Sure. And here's the thing. I mean, you know how it is those people talk, oh, Lisa, 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 she's so pretty. And they're like, dude, shut up. You're talking about Lisa, but man, when you love the Lord, we shouldn't keep our mouth shut. That's so, so good, know. so good. So this book is really all about, you're telling people that we all carry greatness. We mm. all have something inside of us, some purpose that the Lord has put yeah. in our life that we're to see through, Absolute. like you're saying, from, from the womb to the tomb, right? We all have something. He deposited his DNA in us, and God makes no junk. And you may not believe in God, 
but God believes in you, even to the atheist. The Almighty is crazy about you. And I'll just hit you with this. I was watching the Olympics, Sochi, uh, Team USA versus the Russians. My sister calls, she never calls that early in the morning. My answer was not, hi, Jamie, it was what's wrong? Mm. She's crying so much I can't understand her. And Aaron Torian may mean nothing to you, but he's family to us. He did not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six tours in the U.S. Marines. He was Marine of the Year, not of his division, the entire United States Marine Corps. While I'm watching Team USA play the Russians this year with friends, because I'm going to Brazil to be a chaplain, but I wasn't at Russia. And I'm watching, and now the game that seemed so big was so small. Aaron stepped on an IED, blew off both his legs. Oh my gosh. And we buried him at Arlington Fun uh, National Cemetery. Colonel Oliver Knorr spoke at the funeral. And the wild thing is when those Marines carried that American flag casket, I knew without a doubt they were carrying America's treasure. And so from the womb to the tomb. And here's the thing, you don't have to be famous and you don't have to have fortune. Man, God is literally dying to use you. He died not only to save you, he died to use you and carrying greatness. Um, we're just praying it touches a few folks. So I'm good. sure it will, I'm sure it will. So how can people Thank get you. their hands on this yeah, book? Yeah, Amazon.com, okay. uh, Books A Million, Borders, um, FrankShelton.com. Uh, we're doing a book signing soon at uh, two local stores in my hometown, but it's all over online. So uh, we're not just trying to sell books. Uh, but we got a message that uh, I do believe in the right hands and in the right hearts, man, they'll become unstoppable. Very good. Very thank good. you. I'm yeah, honored thank to be you so with much, you. Frank. Such a pleasure to meet you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the impersonation. Got us God a little you. chuckle at the beginning thank of the interview. You. Thank you so much, and thank God you. bless what you're doing you're in awesome. your ministry. Yeah, Taylor May. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, brother. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we've been talking with Frank Shelton on our show. So enjoyed having him as a guest. Uh, make sure you go and get his book. It's called Carrying Greatness. Go to his website, frankshelton.com. Yeah, you know, I, I really love, Taylor, the whole concept that we've been chatting about today, that all of us do have greatness yeah. on the inside of us. Yeah. And I want to talk about that for a moment here. Yet before I do, you got, come on, let's talk about that impersonation. That, that was pretty was good. That was so good. That was That really, was weird. I was surprised. I, I thought that was I really kind of was like, I kind of felt like I was at a crusade yeah. with Billy Graham. <laughs> that was amazing. Back in it time. Really good. Well, I'm kind of wondering, like, do any of you guys do any impersonations? I wish. Absolutely. You do. No, I feel like you no. do have one. I'm just kidding. No, I'm silly. Preston, you have <laughs> somebody put on me. Well, yeah, yeah, I was doing anymore. crazy stuff. You could create something. Create something. Right? 50 Cent. Hold on. Hold on. I love if he just goes out of 50 Cent. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. It's 50 Cent, man. 50, 50, 50, GGT, you man. <laughs> Fuck that time, baby. That's Fuck actually that really good, though. Not bad, actually. You've done that before. Hey, 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 hey. hey. That's, I got a lot of stuff up my sleeve. I don't know. Okay, but how about Rich? I don't, I, I don't do one. I need to start doing Kanye. I give me Kanye. I don't know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, you do. Well, give me some energy with it. Well, what is that? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, but give me some. Give me some. I would love to do impersonations. Okay. I, want, I want to ask Frank a little bit more how to do that. because gonna, We're going to work on ours. Can we do something? Yeah, yeah, like a duo? Something out. We're going to figure something out. I think you guys something. should. Yeah. We should do like a dynamic duo thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and me together. All right. Perfect. We'll pray about it. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I love this idea, that we, this concept about how all of us have greatness on the inside of us. And, yeah. you know, it really is absolutely true. And I, I was reading as, as he was speaking, that I was just thinking about uh, this little kind of thing that happened in the Bible. Mark chapter 9, uh, verse 33. It's pretty interesting. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9, verse 33, that they, speaking of Jesus and his disciples, they came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? He's speaking to his disciples. But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them, taking him in his arms. He said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. I, I just love this story because this is kind of the challenge that so many of us always find ourselves in. The Bible says as Jesus was, was on the road that his disciples, they started a discussion and the discussion really is, hey, out of all of us, who's the greatest? And the truth is on the inside of us, all of us, we have this greatness and we want this greatness to come out. Yet sometimes it begins to overtake us, if you will. So Jesus, he just asked the question, hey, what were you guys, what were you guys talking about? And they all kind of got quiet because they were embarrassed by the simple fact that they had been talking about their pride and they're trying to discover out of all of them, who was the best. But then Jesus does something. He completely levels the landscape 
by talking right to the heart of the issue. He says, check this out. Whoever wants to be first must be willing to be last. For the Son of Man, speaking of himself, came to be servant before he came to be served. And the truth is there's a principle in the kingdom of God. I believe it was Martin Luther King who said this. He said, anyone can be great because anyone can serve. And where the reality of it is, is that all of us have an opportunity to step into greatness. But if you're going to do it Jesus' way, it always begins by you humbling yourself and allowing him to create your platform by allowing him to use your voice. The truth is, if you're too big to serve, then you're too small to lead. And what we have to raise up in this generation is that people have to understand that there's potential on the inside of us, but the way that that potential is stirred up and comes out of us is by being willing to say, you know what, I'm going to serve those around me. And when all of a sudden you start making your desire to serve people and to help people, it's crazy as God will begin to use you. You know, Solomon, who's also known as the wisest man who ever walked on the earth, he prayed a prayer. And he said, God, help me lead your people. And I really believe it was out of that prayer that God then looks at him and says, okay, Solomon, ask anything in my name and I'll give it to you. And Solomon says, give me wisdom. Solomon didn't just ask for wisdom just for wisdom's sake. Solomon asked for wisdom, what? To serve God's people. And whenever you attach your dream to God's people and to God's humanity, it's amazing as his super will be connected to your natural and all of a sudden a supernatural thing begins to happen. I want to challenge you today. Let's go the Jesus way. Let's take the Jesus model. Let's not look around and say and compare ourselves to those around us. Let's not look around and say, man, am I greater than him or am I further along than she is? Why don't you just stop and say, Lord, I want to be a servant to all. And as I serve your people, I believe that you put a desire in my heart. And I believe that you're going to begin to use it to bless your people. People always say, man, I'm trying to get at the top. I'm trying to get at the top. It's so crowded. I'm, 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 I'm hitting people. You know what I've learned? I've learned that it's not very crowded at the bottom. So if you make a decision to say, I'm going to start right here and say, I'm going to serve people. You're not going to run into anybody. You're not going to offend anybody. You're not going to get offended. Why? Because it's not about you. It's about Jesus. And Jesus has placed greatness inside of you that if you'd be willing to be last, he'd put you first. And if you're willing to be servant, he'll make you a leader. That is the truth of our gospel today. That as we serve him, and as we become content in him, he takes us to places that we could only dream of. We don't have to argue with our fellow man about who's greater. We just have to put our eyes on Jesus and say, Lord, there's no task too big and no task too small. I just want to be used by you. I want to pray for you today because I really believe that Frank was speaking right to us. And I really believe that his message is so pertinent and so practical for us right now that all of us have greatness on the inside of us. The question is, how do we get that greatness to come out of us? It happens when we just start serving. Let me pray for you today. Lord, I thank you so much uh, for God, for what you're doing today, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you're, you're addressing the heart of the matter. That, Lord, it's about our purpose, not our position, Lord. It, it, it's about our testimony, not our title today, Jesus. So God, I pray right now, Lord, for those that are watching, Jesus, that you'd begin to stir up their faith, Lord, that they'd put their trust and their faith in you, that you would carry them on this journey, that you would lead them on this journey. Lord, we want to be like you, that you didn't come to be served, but rather you came to serve. So Jesus, as we serve, we believe that you're going to take the greatness out of us and use it to bless your people. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus' name. Amen. We love you. Amen. Awesome. Well, awesome show today, guys, yeah. most definitely. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. Make sure you connect with us on our, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. You can follow us at Juice TV underscore network. And we want to give a big shout out to Frank Shelton. Thank you so much for being our guest. And also to the awesome band who's been providing cool music for the whole week, Brad Alden and his crew. Thanks so much, you guys. See you on Top 3 next time. That's all I